What's going on? Nick here from SideHustleNation.com. And today I want to tackle the topic of passive income, something that's always on everybody's minds. Today we're going to dive into the four types of passive income that you need to know about, why it's so important to spend some time and energy and focus on this, and the 25 income streams of mine that I consider to be passive or at least uh, time leveraged. All right, so first up, the four types of passive income that you need to know about. Number one is the uh, it takes money to make money option. This would be buying real estate, buying dividend stocks, absolutely a viable option and a great way to go about it if you already have money to invest. So we'll talk about that. Option number two is the building assets option, which uh, takes a lot of time up front, but can be time leveraged or somewhat passive down the road. So where a lot of my personal income comes from. Option number three is something that I don't spend a ton of time on, but this would be sharing or selling or renting assets that you control. Um, Airbnb has made this really popular. Turo for cars, and there's a ton of others in the peer-to-peer -peer rental space, which might be worth taking a look at. And then option number four, which I consider really important, is what I call reverse passive income. This is money that you save on a monthly basis that goes directly to your bottom line. And in fact, it's actually more efficient than making more money because hey, you're not having to pay taxes on what you save. So we'll get into all of that in just a minute. But why should you care about passive income in the first place? Warren Buffett put it this way, if you don't find a way to make money in your sleep, you're gonna work until you die. And if that doesn't hit home for you, I don't know what will. This is a really important thing to kind of wrap your head around. When we start out in our careers, we naturally are trading time for money. It's no problem with that. Everybody does it. But you need to think about your income as a, a pie chart, as a, as a revenue pie, right? And when we start out, the majority of that income or all of that income is active income, trading hours for dollars. And eventually we want to be able to stop working or at least get to the point where working is optional. And to do that, we need to increase the section of the pie that is time leveraged or passive income and decrease the percentage of active income that we're relying on. And that's what retirement is. It's like I go, I stopped trading hours for dollars. And now I'm living off of my nest egg. I'm living off my investments, right? And through some inherent or some conscious effort, I think you can get there faster. I think you can accelerate that a little bit with intention, growing that time leverage or that passive income piece of the pie. So I want to get your ideas, uh, creative juices flowing in this video on some different ways that uh, I ring the cash register passively, and I think you can do the same. All right, so let's get into some of my own personal passive income streams. Again, these are going to fall into categories one, two, and four for me. That would be buying assets, building assets, and then the uh, conscious saving money aspect, the reverse passive income asset. So number one for me, which has been for a long time, is affiliate marketing or earning affiliate commissions. This is where you're recommending a product or service that hopefully that you use and that you like and that you enjoy, and that would be beneficial to your readers, listeners, audience in some way, and earning a finder's fee, earning a commission on that sale. Uh, back in the day, I did this with footwear and that was my original side hustle. Today, you'll find it all over Side Hustle Nation, affiliate links for different tools that I use. You'll find it even in this video later on for some of the products and services uh, that I tend to recommend. So affiliate commissions is uh, the main source of income and has been for a long time for me. So that is definitely a time leveraged form of income in that you can create assets once and uh, have them earn for you over and over again without you necessarily uh, standing behind the computer making those sales. Um, I'll link up some examples of uh, blog posts of mine that are monetized with affiliate commissions below this video. Income stream number two is podcasting, which yes, absolutely takes a ton of effort to produce, but it takes the same amount of effort to produce whether 10 people listen or whether 10,000 people listen, right? So it's time leveraged in that way where there's uh, an advertising component that I can earn more selling ads to that bigger audience or selling ads against that bigger audience. And if there's product mentions, either my own products or services or the guest product or services as an affiliate, it becomes a very time leveraged asset as uh, as things grow. The next three income streams that I want to share are all self publishing related. And this goes into the build assets category as well, because it's something that you can create once and sell over and over again. I started my self publishing journey in 2012 and have added several books uh, to the portfolio since then and have earned royalties 
every month on it through publishing on Amazon. And there's three flavors of this. One is Kindle book sales, which you earn, depending on how you price your book, you earn 35 to 70% of the book sales uh, from there. The second would be paperback sales, which again, print on demand. I do not have a garage full of my titles uh, sitting in the garage um, and have to ship those out. Amazon prints and ships those uh, for you uh, every time somebody orders and I'll probably make around $3 per copy there. And then the third self-publishing stream is the audiobook sales, which I would advise against recording that on your own unless you have professional uh, recording equipment, voiceover experience. Because I had the podcast, people were kind of used to hearing my voice. So I did want to record um, most of those myself. I have outsourced one of those. And then you can even find voiceover actors to do this uh, for free for you in exchange for a percentage of future royalties. So really cool way to kind of get your work out there in a bunch of different mediums and, and not even have a huge upfront cost there. Self-publishing is one of my favorite side hustles, one of my favorite time leveraged income streams. There's a lot of resources on Side Hustle Nation on how to get started, how to go about uh, getting your book up for sale on Amazon, on one of the world's largest marketplaces. Also along the lines of creating something once and selling it over and over again, I've got a couple more in that vein. And one is uh, selling a digital course on a platform called Udemy, which I've been on since 2014. And this course continues to make sales month after month after month. And over the course of that time, it's earned over $20,000. It's very time leveraged in that I just have to log in and welcome new students and answer new questions as they come up, which are pretty infrequent at this point. So definitely a time leveraged uh, opportunity to consider there. And the second one along those lines is selling digital assets on Fiverr, which for the sake of this video has transitioned or has branded themselves more as a freelance platform. But what you could do is come up with some sort of service idea and then have digital product add-ons versus leading with the digital product, which is kind of what I tend to do, where it's like, hey, I will send you this file or this book or something that I pre-created and I can deliver right away. And then having the service offerings in the upsells, you could have the service offering and then like, oh, if you want my template to do this or your template to do it yourself, you could add, um, add that in on uh, on Fiverr. Again, it's about where can you put your buy buttons up on the internet? How can you make it easy for people to do business with you? And especially if you already have the assets created, if you already have this information inside of your head, how could you get that in front of people who are, number one, looking for that information, and number two, who it can naturally be helpful for them? I think there's a big opportunity there. The other fun platform on creating something once and selling it over and over again is related to print on demand. And uh, Merch by Amazon is probably the largest uh, supplier of this print on demand, but there's a bunch of other services too. This is where you can create a physical product that you never have to touch. It's just in the form of a design that you upload. And when somebody finds it and buys it, often through Amazon search, they print it, they ship it, they fulfill it. Like they, it's completely hands off. And so it's very rewarding to uh, check the royalty numbers or check the earnings numbers from here. Again, not a huge income stream, but uh, pretty, pretty fun to have stuff that you created years ago, still making sales there. The next three income streams that I want to share are advertising related. And the first of those is display ads. So if you spend any time on the internet, you know what display ads are, you know, banner graphics, contextual ads, but I managed to sell my own uh, directly for one of the sites that I run, where it's like, hey, here's the banner placement, here's the price, and I actually have these set up on uh, PayPal, like recurring subscriptions. So it's like every month they just it just happens to go in and have had the same advertisers for years in that case. So if you have a website that gets targeted traffic, definitely uh, a viable option to pursue there. Number 11 is selling a featured listing in a directory. So the website I'm refer referring to is kind of a directory type of website where like Yelp, like TripAdvisor, uh, I've had companies reach out and say, well, can we just pay you to be at the top? And after enough people started doing that, I was like, okay, yeah, we can, we'll figure out how to get that done. And so I've been charging $500 a month for this premium sponsored listing at the top of this directory, similar to what all these other directories tend to do. And that's been, again, on a recurring automated thing that is very hands-off for me. And the final one related to advertising is on this website is what I'll call non-display ads. If you're running a website, you might not want to clutter up the look and feel of your site with a bunch of 
third-party advertising. I totally get that. One uh, workaround that I've been able to do is to sell what I'll call uh, retargeting rights, where it's like I will install a company's uh, pixel on the back end so they could run advertising against that audience. Again, very valuable uh, for those companies if it reaches a targeted user base. And again, very hands-off. Everybody's on kind of a subscription thing. If they end up canceling, it takes a couple minutes to go in and uh, delete that script. And the cool thing here is you can add, whereas on a website, you might only have limited inventory for advertising space. Here, I could host uh, multiple of these retargeting scripts and kind of stack up that revenue. Oh, actually one more on the advertising front, and that is YouTube ads. So this is uh, the income stream I'm probably most excited about right now. So if you're watching this video, thank you. On average, you just added, I think, 1.5 cents uh, to, my, to my bottom line. So thank you for that. YouTube is a fascinating experience because, um, well, yes, it definitely takes time to uh, come up with topics and create the videos and do all of that stuff. Once the video is up and running, it can generate views, generate income for years as some of my older videos have started to accumulate. So definitely a income stream that I'm excited about and can be very much time leveraged as your viewership uh, grows over time. The next several income streams that I wanna talk about are investing related. So the first one has been dividend paying stocks. So probably five or six years ago, I started getting serious about building a, what I call my cash flow portfolio. And this is, was, this was helpful for getting me off the investing sidelines and into the game. Like I'm always, I'm like the most pessimistic investor. Oh, we're due for a correction. We're due for a market crash, but investing for cash flow through the form of, you know, dividend growth stocks, these being companies that have a history of not only paying, but increasing their dividends year after year after year was really helpful for me to get over that fear. So not necessarily investing for share price appreciation, if and when that happens, fantastic, but instead investing for this cash flow and this cash flow growth. It's been really rewarding to build that portfolio up again, starting with kind of like a toe dip, which I do with a lot of investments, and then adding uh, to that over time and reinvesting the, the dividends that come through there. So that's been a growing passive income stream for me as well. I've got several other kind of what I'll call alternative investments uh, kind of along the same vein or with that same goal of building up this cash flow portfolio. The first of those is kind of an online real estate investment trust called Fundrise. Again, this is not investment advice or solicitation for investment, but Fundrise uh, will invest you in kind of a diversified uh, portfolio of commercial real estate properties. And at least in my case, they've paid dividends every quarter since I've been a member for the last, I think five years. Um, of course, you know, your mileage may vary. There hasn't been any crazy real estate downturns during that time. So definitely interesting to see how it'll shake out in the next few months. But I've been a happy Fundrise investor so far. I'm also an affiliate of theirs too. The next investment themed uh, passive income stream for me has been through a platform called uh, Peer Street, which is uh, collateral backed, real estate collateral backed um, short term loans. So generally, kind of I'm looking at loans in the 12 month range that pay, you know, six to 10% interest. And I think my lifetime is around six and a half percent annualized returns through this platform. And I'll compare this because I used to be a, a lender on Prosper and, and actually still am, but I've been drawing down my account. Prosper is a platform for peer to peer lending. Um, peer Street is similar except with Prosper, your loans uh, have no collateral. So you have no recourse if and when uh, that borrower defaults. Uh, in Peer Street, which is open to accredited investors only, I'll link up the definition of, of that below, but those loans are now backed by the, the real estate that you're kind of underwriting and that the borrowers are, are borrowing for. And they're usually for rehab loans. Like, hey, I need a short-term uh, infusion of capital to complete this uh, renovation that we're doing on this property. The downside is, like I said, accredited investors only and historically thousand dollar minimums per deal. So if any of these do go south, uh, be pretty, uh, pretty painful uh, relative to Prosper, where it's $25 minimums. The next investing stream is through a platform called Worthy Bonds, which is a business lending platform for lack of a better term. And I'm affiliate of, um, worthy as well, but they pay fixed 5% interest bonds starting with a $10, I guess $10 per bond as a minimum investment. So super simple to get started. No, uh, no withdrawal penalties for early liquidation. I've moved money in and out of there and they pay interest really consistently. Again, uh, they're turning around and lending your money to businesses at a higher interest 
rate. And so they're profiting on the spread. And so really curious to see again, what, what's going to happen if a bunch of businesses start to go under, but so far they've, uh, they've performed well. Now I want to move into passive income category number four, which remember was the reverse passive income category or the money saving category. And first up for me, there is credit card rewards, which I know some people like, Hey, we don't like credit cards. Um, I'm a huge fan and I'm a fan because this is money I'm going to be spending anyways. I might as well get rewarded for that. And sure, you know, you're one to three, four, even 5% in certain categories of spending on a day-to-day -day basis is fantastic. I consider that free money uh, from credit cards, but where it gets really interesting is in taking advantage of new credit card signup bonuses, which uh, my wife and I have done for years and it has allowed us to really re reap thousands of dollars worth of rewards in terms of cash back and free travel. So uh, without hurting our credit either, I, sh I should add. So I'm definitely a fan of credit card rewards. If you hit up uh, the free credit card rewards course here on uh, YouTube, you can uh, check out the kind of behind the scenes of how all that works, but definitely a reverse passive income stream that I consider to be an important one. Number 18 is cash back apps. And there are several of these that I utilize on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, basically whenever I'm spending money, it's like, is there a way through uh, Wikibuy, through Fetch Rewards, through Pay, through a bunch of these different ones to earn some extra cash back on what I'm already spending? Again, uh, these can be very, very time leveraged, or at least very passive in, in some of them that just, hey, we'll, we'll find deals for you. Or if you shop through our app, you'll get extra cash back. Super easy to, to do. So I'll link up a couple of my favorites uh, down below. The, the next one I have, number 19, is actually um, pretty significant savings. And that was switching our cell phone provider or my cell phone provider to a service called Mint Mobile, which is, I think, 15 bucks a month when you prepay versus the 30 that I was paying uh, before with the service called Ting or the 60 that I was paying uh, before with a service called Verizon. You might have heard of it. They're, um, they run on the T-Mobile network and it's it's been perfectly suitable so far. So I've been happy with, with that one. And so that's money again, reverse passive income goes directly back to, uh, to our bottom line. Number 20 is an app called trim, which is an interesting kind of like bill negotiation app. And I was a little bit skeptical uh, of this at first, but they're like, Hey, we're negotiating your Comcast bill for you. And, um, you know, a couple of days later, they, they came back and said, Hey, we saved you $300 on your annual Comcast bill. I was like, that's fantastic. Like I didn't have to do anything for this. And the catch is Trim uh, will charge you up front. They'll say, hey, we saved you 300 bucks. We're going to charge you, I think, 33% uh, of that. So it's, you know, it's still a net positive, but, you know, something to be aware of before you just start singing the praises of it, but worth, worth considering. And they'll also have cool tools that let you say like, oh, you know, this is a subscription that I've been paying for that I don't use anymore. They'll be kind of identify those on a monthly basis. All right, the next three income streams that I have are more lifestyle based and they kind of fall under this category of uh, reverse passive income as well. The first is living a debt free life. Talked about credit card rewards. The important thing I need to add there is never spend money that you don't have. Don't buy stuff you don't need that you can't afford. Um, every credit card that I've ever had has been 0% interest because I treat it like a debit card. I'm paying that off uh, every month, but living a debt free lifestyle saves us who knows, hundreds and thousands of dollars over the course of lifetime of loans and interests and payments. Um, very, it, it's hard to overlook that, right? So that's an important thing. If you are uh, in debt today, I would prioritize getting out of debt before looking at really any of these other um, alternative income streams, especially the investing ones. The second lifestyle factor that I think really uh, helps me build up this reverse passive income stream is living a commute free lifestyle. I've been really grateful to be able to work from home for the last 12 years, which has saved thousands of dollars in uh, gas and vehicle maintenance and vehicle depreciation, insurance costs, a lot of factors, a lot of costs go into your daily commute. And I understand some jobs obviously need you to be uh, in the office, have a physical presence there, um, you know, laying the bricks, so to speak. But if you can, and maybe COVID has accelerated this, if you're able to negotiate even just one day a week of working from home, think of the savings that that can add up to. So I think that's a significant one not to be overlooked. Number three on this lifestyle one is renting instead of buying. And then talking about our primary residence here, um, this one is very controversial in personal finance circles. Like, why would you be throwing money away on rent? 
we throw money away on rent happily every month. You know why? Because buying a similar place or buying the type of place that we would, uh, you know, consider a forever home would cost probably 20 grand a year move over what we're paying today. So it's a significant cost savings uh, for us to rent today. The New York Times has a fantastic calculator to help you kind of run the numbers in your particular town. I think when we last did it, it was like a 23 year break even window uh, renting versus buying for us. So it was like, hey, no brainer, we ride this out uh, as long as we can. The final two income streams that I have here, number 24 is savings account interest. Savings interest rates are abysmal right now. So again, uh, low priority, but it does add up over time. I'm with uh, Capital One, of course, subject to change as I've moved money around as different uh, banks have offered different interest rates. And finally is the checking account interest, which I think was at a buck 78 uh, for last year. So it was not a huge income stream, but hey, this was the list of passive income ideas. So every little bit adds up. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a bunch more passive income ideas over at sidehustlenation.com slash passive income. I'll link that up for you below this video. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more money-making ideas.